Welcome in. Hunt Palmer coming to you from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studio downtown in the capital city on this Wednesday. About half that work week in the rear view mirror. Things warming up outside. Sun is shining. Roads ought to be just about open. We ought to be just about home free this week from our first weather event of 2020. 24. Hope you're safe. Hope you're warm. Hope your water's functioning. Not the case for everyone here at Guarantee, but we'll be here for you for the next two hours, no matter what your circumstance is at the moment. Fired up to be here on this Wednesday. Got Jacob Beck and Casey Gaines back there on the ones and twos. It's what if Wednesday. It's going to fire up here in about 30 minutes. Uh, coming up in an hour and a half. So at 2.30, bottom of hour number two of David Eckert covers Ole Miss for the Jackson Clary and Ledger. LSU and Ole Miss in the PMAC tonight, 6 o'clock tip-off. I'm kind of excited for LSU and Ole Miss tonight. I can't say that I've been like super excited for a basketball game in, in a couple of years that has been played in the PMAC. Um, I am uh, coming up tonight. I'll be in the PMAC, excited about that, and I'll give you my preview of the Rebels coming up here in 15 minutes. There are point spreads out for next year's college football schedule. I'll give you some of those that FanDuel has posted. There are a couple of issues Uh in Tuscaloosa at the moment that we will certainly highlight moving forward. Um, but I'm going to start here with LSU football and the news of yesterday. And of course that news was that LSU bringing Corey Raymond back as a defensive coach, whether that's the cornerbacks coach, secondary coach, whatever the case may be, Corey Raymond will be back in the building where he played his college football, where he coached for almost a decade, um, molding a, a really, really strong position group year over year at DBU. And, there have been a lot of different reactions to Corey Raymond being rumored to come back to LSU and coming back to LSU. Um, I pay a lot of attention to the LSU fan base on the internet, whether that's a blessing or a curse, whether it's a job requirement or a sickness. I'm not really sure how, <laughs> how to qualify that, but it's true. I spend a lot of time on Twitter. I spend a lot of time on the on three message board. I'm over there on tiger droppings. I get text messages. I'm in group text. I get a lot of feedback from a lot of LSU football fans. And quite often, folks that leave, whether it's a recruit who decommits or picks another place or someone that transfers out, coach that leaves, eh, well, eh, didn't really want him anyway. That's just, if you're going to paint with a broad brush, that's generally the reaction. Anybody that shows up or comes in, great ad, great pickup, huge hire, awesome, this is great. That's just the nature of a fan. And that's okay. Passion's awesome. I'm all for it. But I see it. And there was a, a thought and maybe a pervasive thought into the LSU fan base that Corey Raymond, not that great towards the end. Yeah, a lot of really good secondaries there for a good run, but things tailed off. Uh, good riddance, go to Florida, we don't care. That's what a lot of people felt. And then there are some that say they're frustrated because they felt like, due to reports in the media, that often Corey Raymond was angling for more money from LSU and flirting with other schools routinely so that he could get a raise. And that frustrated people that say, hey, you're from here, you're from New Iberia, you played here. You're a coach here. You got a great things going. Just keep coaching. You'll get some raises and just stay there and don't ask for any more money. Okay. And so I think there are some people that say, hey, Corey Raymond did a great job and I'm bummed out he's going to Florida. That sucks. There was some of that too. Mixed emotions, but I felt the more vocal of those was that, hey, things tailed off. The recruiting wasn't as good. The DB play was bad. You're, you're, the game's passed you by. Go, go to Gainesville and, and play with Sunbelt Billy. That's fine. So I'll tell you what I thought, personally, when Corey Raymond left. I thought, that sucks. Because I felt like he had one of the most well-branded, high-level position groups in college football. Oklahoma was rolling through quarterbacks. That was an elite level. Alabama had a run on running backs that was just ridiculous from Ingram, Richardson, Henry, Yeldon, Jacobs. I mean, you know the list. I mean, but that's that was a recognizable position group that was just cycling them through. And LSU was doing that at defensive back. 
And yes, there were your Derek Stinleys and your Tredavious Whites that are from right here in the state of Louisiana that you've got to lock up and, and have play great football for you. But there were also Elias Ricks and Dwight McLaughlin, Jay Ward, Jacoby Stevens, Grant Delvin, that weren't from here. Then LSU was going out and recruiting the highest level defensive back recruits in the country. And that spanned Corey's entire time here at LSU. In 2020, LSU signed Eli Ricks, who was the number two corner in the country, number one, depending on where you looked, and Dwight McLaughlin, who became a high-level SEC defensive back. He was good at LSU, and he played very well at Arkansas on a couple of bad defenses. The year before that, LSU signed Derek Stingley, the number one corner in the country. Mo Hampton, who at the time was a huge recruit. Jay Ward, who became a multi-year starter at LSU. Cordell Flott, NFL player. Red Arius Jones in that class as well. That didn't pan out, but... The year before that, Kelvin Joseph. High-level player. Yeah, right here in the backyard, but high-level player. Ended up moving on, but NFL player. The year before that, Kerry Vincent, Jacoby Stevens, Grant Delpit. Those guys were key contributors on a national championship secondary. Christian Fulton was right before that. Those are elite-level prospects that Corey Raymond helped bring in. And I felt like LSU in 17, 18, 19 was elite in the secondary. In 2020, that defense stunk. That was a weird year. Derek Singley missed a lot of it. You had to rely on younger players. 2021, they weren't very good either. And if you want to pin that on Corey Raymond, I'm not going to tell you he did an awesome job. I don't know. The recruiting looked good. The play on the field was not great. I tend to think there were a lot of factors that had to deal with that. Now, you fast forward to what LSU put on the field in 2023, and that was very, very poor. And as we've said a million times about that defense, it was not one thing. It was everything. I don't think the players on LSU's defense were at the level of LSU's elite defenses. I don't think the scheme was good. I don't think the execution was good. I don't think the tackling was good. That goes from stopping the run to rushing the passer to coverage. That's zone. That's man. All of it was bad. But I think, personally, the biggest reason LSU was not very good on defense was that the players were not at the level they needed to be. That is not to suggest that everything else is off the hook. I just told you it was all bad. But I think the level of talent was not up to standard at LSU. You can disagree, and that's okay. Reasonable minds can differ. I'm just telling you how I think. And I do believe that adding Corey Raymond to this staff will help that problem. Because I still believe that Corey Raymond can put on purple and gold, go into living rooms, whether it's in Denham Springs, Shreveport, the West Bank of New Orleans or Charlotte, North Carolina or L.A. and say, hey, this is DBU. This is what we've done here. This is what we're going to do. Come play for us. And while it's a different recruiting landscape than it was six, seven, eight years ago, I believe he can still do it. And he got Wardale Mack right out of New Orleans to commit to Florida. And they suck. So... I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be a guy who knows the ins and outs of DB coaching. I don't know what great hand technique and how to flip your hips and what the best way to communicate zone defense is. And I'm not the greatest Italian evaluator in the world. I'm just telling you what I know. I know what he did. I know what his role was on that coaching staff. I know that he's been gone for two years. And I think can come in and help LSU's defense get significantly better. That's what I think. I think this is a good hire. I think Bo Davis is a good hire. I like the Blake Baker hire. And all of these guys that Brian Kelly is bringing in have Louisiana ties, have background in recruiting, have been known as strong recruiters, and 
have developed elite level college players into NFL draft picks and eventual pros. That's happened across the board here. Bo Davis has done it wherever he's been. LSU, Alabama, Texas. Corey Raymond did it at LSU. Didn't have time to do it at Florida. But like I said, he had Wardell Mack committed. Blake Baker, even in his track record at Damone Clark. Boom. He's playing in the NFL every Sunday. So it's not a quick fix with this defense. I do not think LSU is going to field a top 25 defense in college football next year. If they do, I'll be really pleasantly surprised, and I'll be doing a pregame show for some playoff games. I don't think that's going to happen, but I would love it. But I think they're laying a foundation that makes a lot of sense. Nothing is a sure thing in this sport. Now that Nick Saban's moved on, maybe outside of Athens, Georgia, there's just not anything that's for sure. But you play the odds. And the odds tell me that Corey Raymond can come to Baton Rouge in that office, recruit elite-level talent, and put a good product on the field. I like the hire. I'm hopeful for the LSU defense. I'm excited about the direction of the offense. And I think the football program is in good hands right now. It's hard. It's hard to be really good at college football. This feels like a good move yesterday. Remains to be seen. And I don't think anybody in Baton Rouge or within the LSU fan base is going to be quick to change their opinion. If you're completely anti-Corey Raymond because of the end of his tenure and leaving to go to Florida and all that kind of stuff, I doubt yesterday changed your mind. If you're in my camp, you're going to have to see some evidence to the contrary to change your mind. Everybody's probably dug in. But I'm telling you where I sit. I think it's a good thing for LSU to bring Corey Raymond back and to recruit defensive backs, develop them, and help this defense recover from the disaster that was 2023. Those are my thoughts. If you got yours, you can get them to us in the Bayou Ford chat right there on YouTube. Throw us a like if you would. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us on a Wednesday. Half the work weekend, the rear view mirror. What if Wednesday's coming up in 15 minutes? So uh, get your questions in for that or your what ifs in for that. When we come back, I'm excited. PMAC tonight, 6 o'clock. Give you my thoughts on LSU and Ole Miss, plus the point spread, which is a little bit interesting. That's next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. One Bath and Closets. OneBathandClosets.com is the website. David Duvall and his team been in the game 30 years redesigning and remodeling bathrooms and closets. I know a lot of people refinanced their homes a couple years ago. You've got a great rate, and you're not really looking to move. But maybe you're thinking, I could, I could upgrade things around here add value to my home so when eventually we move out or sell it, we've we've got something on our hands. Well, David Duvall and his team are happy to come in and be your one-stop shop for all things bathrooms and closets. You don't have to call four different contractors to get your bathroom renovated or remodeled. Just call David Duvall, one guy. Come in. They can do a full-scale renovation or remodel. They are licensed contractors, floors, plumbing, bathtubs, bathrooms, sinks, the whole works. They can do it. Or maybe something simple. Tub to shower conversion. Take that porcelain tub out that you never use. Put in good looking glass, walk in shower, change the aesthetic and functionality of your bathroom completely. You're thinking, ah, not an awesome time to pay for that. Financing options are available at One Bath and Closets. Go to the website, check out the testimonials from their satisfied customers, look at the photographs of their fantastic work, and then request that free consultation at onebathandclosets.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Bayou Ford is taking $10,000 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 lifted trucks. $10,000 off new Ford F-150 and 3.9% financing. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you.
Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Bayou Ford is taking $10,000 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 lifted trucks. $10,000 off new Ford F-150 and 3.9% financing. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, Retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal. Group joined me and Jimmy out for the Thursday edition of Live at Lunch, where Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar and Town Square Pizza. Dwayne Colucci is with us along with Matt Humans. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. weekdays on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. You're listening to the Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. You know, I think a lot of people checked out on LSU basketball last year. Understandably so. You had the number one ranked baseball team in the country uh, coming up. And LSU was losing SEC games by the truckload. So uh, that's just kind of the way things go in this town. And that's that, that's that's expected. Um, and look, they did not get off to a great start this year in men's basketball either. You had uh, the loss to Nichols, and you've gotten smoked in some of your non-conference games that were fairly high profile. Uh, you were pretty not you were non-competitive at Syracuse. You were fairly non-competitive at Texas, and, and Kansas State came in here and handled you pretty good as well. So that's just the nature of, of the way that this thing goes in in, in Baton Rouge right now. Um, but my hope is that they're building something, and they're they're on the ground floor right now, and they've played pretty well uh, in the first two conference games and then part of the Auburn game. Now, whether you want to give them credit for fighting back in that game down 28 or you want to say they got down 30, Auburn quit, and they got back in it, who cares? Either, I'm not saying either one's right or wrong. It is what it is. You got smoked in the toughest environment in the league right now. But these are the games. These games against the middle of the league – especially at home, where LSU needs to start taking that step. And tonight they'll welcome Ole Miss in for a 6 o'clock tip, and I'll give you kind of my thoughts on this Ole Miss team as they come in under first-year head coach Chris Beard. But Matt McMahon had his, his weekly radio show uh, with Chris Blair over TJ Ribs, and he gave his thoughts on the Ole Miss Rebels. Starting with the personnel, uh, Coach Beard's done a great job with the roster construction. They returned the two top 50 players who were already in the program and Matthew Morrell and Brakefield, the Duke transfer. Uh, both of those guys are terrific uh, who will play this game for a long time. And then I thought through the portal, able to add experience. They are shooting the ball, I believe, last I checked, 13th in the country in three-point percentage mm. at 40% from behind the arc. Uh, and then again, credit to Coach Beard and, and their program. Uh, they've been in a lot of close games, and they found ways to win them. Five games already where the opponent had the ball last possession of the game in a one-possession game, and they got to stop all five of those games to, at the buzzer 
uh, to win the game. So uh, they've they've shown they know how to win. Uh, we need an awesome crowd. I mean, we need you Tiger fans yep. in the PMAC on, on Wednesday night. And uh, looking forward to it. Six o'clock, Ole Miss 15-1. and one. Really talented team, well coached. Uh, but our guys are going to be locked in and ready to go. And that's a lot of, of what I want to get to here. As he mentioned, Ole Miss is 15-1. and one. They're 2-1 and one in league play. They're ranked 21st in the country. Um, the only real non-conference win they had of any consequence was Memphis, who's good this year. Penny's got a good team, and, uh, and Ole Miss beat them in Oxford 80-77. to 77. Uh, They beat Cal, but Cal's got a losing record. They're, they're not any good. In the SEC, they opened things up and got a dose of reality as an undefeated team going up to Knoxville to play what is probably the best team in the SEC, and they lost 90-64. to They lost that game um, by 26 points. Yeah, 26 points. So got smoked at Tennessee. But they came back and beat Florida uh, 103-85, to and they beat Vanderbilt 69-56. Uh, to What stands out to me about some of these scores is, especially in their two wins, they beat Memphis 80 to 77 and beat Florida 103 85. Those are not Chris Beard scores. If you know Chris Beard from his time at Texas Tech, their entire foundation of the program was on defense. They were tough for they got to the national final playing defense. And you're getting in shootouts with Memphis and Florida and winning them. 80 points in one, 103 in the other. Now, that Vanderbilt game, 69-56, that sounds more like a Chris Beard game, but we all know the facts is that Vanderbilt stinks. So that's where that comes from. But Tennessee scored 90 on him. He doesn't have his guys in there yet. He's done a really good job of, of overhauling things, like Matt McMahon said, but they're not what they will be if Chris Beard is there three, four, five years. They will become a defensive juggernaut. If he's allowed, if he stays there long enough. So let's look at them by the numbers. Offensively, they've been pretty good. They're 65th in the country in offensive efficiency, 70th in points per game. That's okay. I mean, you're talking about 300 and some odd teams. Um, that's okay. Um, he mentioned their three point shooting, which has been phenomenal. They are sixth in the country in three point shooting percentage, sixth in the nation, but they don't shoot a ton of them. They're 279th in the country in threes attempted per game. They only shoot about 19. So they're selective, and when they take their threes, when they when they take good threes, they're making them. Um, they're really good at taking care of the ball. 31st in the country in terms of fewest turnovers. That's something LSU thrives on. LSU's 10th in the country in steals per possession. Top 10 in the country in steals per possession. Ole Miss doesn't allow that. But LSU needs to try to turn them over some in this game and certainly get out and contest the three when Ole Miss tries to take it. But this is what this is what I'm talking about with Chris Beard. They're 90th in the country in defensive efficiency. That shocks me that Chris Beard would have a team that was 90th in defensive efficiency. Um, 47th in opponent shooting percentage. They don't foul a lot. 34th in the country in terms of fewest fouls. Um, they don't turn people over a lot. 105th in the country in turnovers force. That's a lot of numbers, but it paints the picture here. Ole Miss, more offensive than defensive, shoots not a ton of threes, but at a very high clip, and hasn't defended the way that Chris Beard wants them to. Their top six point scorers play on the perimeter, which is not unheard of, but it's not ideal either if you're Ole Miss. He mentioned Matthew Morrell, who's one of the best players in the conference. He's a 6'4", senior guard, been at Ole Miss a long time, 17 points per game, 41% from three-point range. In his last two games, 9 of 18 in wins over Florida and Vanderbilt from three-point range. That's obviously 50%. He's been in double figures every single game except one. That was the game against Tennessee, and he scored nine. So he scored nine or more in every single game. He's going to get his buckets. LSU needs to try to slow him down, but Matthew Morrell is the best player scorer for Ole Miss. Alan Flanagan may be a familiar name to you. He spent four years with Bruce Pearl at Auburn, transferred over to Ole Miss to play this year. He's a 6'6 guard. And he's their distributor. He's been excellent at getting rid of the basketball and, and creating opportunities for other guys. He's also not going to shoot a ton of threes. He's going to be a slasher. 175 of his 202 shots, so 70% or so of his shots, come from two-point range. That's That's him. The, the you'll you'll recognize Brandon Murray. He'll be out there. Of course, been his freshman year at LSU under Will Wade. 
He was hurt for a lot of December, but he's come back and he's playing. You'll see Musa Cisse, who will play for them. It's a guy that LSU wanted very, very badly. He's a shot blocker and rim protector, but he is nothing in terms of shot blocking and rim protecting compared to Jamari and Sharp. Jamari and Sharp, you'll notice pretty quickly if you turn on the TV or if you walk in the PMAC. He's seven foot five, okay? Seven foot five. He led the nation in shot blocking last year at Western Kentucky, and he's leading Ole Miss in shot blocking this year. He is a presence down low. We remember Will Baker up at Syracuse against the big seven foot four kid was basically ineffective. And that's a concern for me in this game. Because while I don't think Will Baker is option one or two on offense, I think that's Cook and Jordan Wright. You need to have some sort of front court presence scoring the ball at some point. You've got to have it somewhere. And if Sharp and Cissé are able to take Baker out of the game, that concerns me. That's going to put a ton of pressure on Jalen Cook to be awesome, on Jordan Wright to knock down shots, on Mike Williams. Like that's. I'm not asking Baker to go out there and score 20 a night. That we've we've crossed that bridge, but. You need to find something, and Baker was completely nullified at Syracuse. So, teams have scored on Ole Miss. LSU should be able to do it at home. But again, to, my, to go back to my the point that led things off, these are the games that are going to have to, to be games that LSU wins in order to start moving forward. I, I, I went over this on Monday. LSU's not going to go to Tuscaloosa and win. They're not going to go to Knoxville and win. The, 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 the team and the program are not ready for that. You saw it in Auburn. That's It's not going to happen. You can beat Ole Miss at home. You can beat Georgia. You can beat South Carolina. You can beat Missouri. You can probably beat Arkansas at home. Mississippi State. And Ole Miss is squarely in that. I know they're 15-1. and one. I know they're number 21 in the country. Look at their wins and losses. They're winning at home against Florida and Vanderbilt. They went up to Knoxville and got destroyed. They didn't play anybody outside of Memphis in the non-conference. I am surprised. I will tell you this. I'm surprised LSU is a two, two and a half, three point favorite, depending on where you shop and what time of day you're getting that. But that's the consensus on where the line is, is LSU is about a bucket favorite. That surprises me. But as I said, to start this conference season, you're not going to hear me talk about tournament resumes and net rankings unless I have to later on. But right now, that's not in that's not part of the strategy on covering LSU's basketball team. I need to see strides. And the strides, the easiest strides you can make are by beating the middle of the pack. Ole Miss is middle of the pack in the SEC. They are not Tennessee. They are not Kentucky. They are not, let's see, who else is up there? Tennessee, Kentucky. Really, that's top heavy. As I go through them, am I missing somebody obvious? Those are the and Alabama is number one in the country in scoring offense. Uh, they're not one of those teams right now. Are they a team that could make the tournament? Yeah. Are they a team that LSU should be able to play with in the PMAC? Yes. So you lose in blowout fashion, that'll be real disheartening tonight. You play a really tight game, that should be kind of where you are. You lose it, that's a bummer. That's you win it, that's a step forward. I'll be in the PMAC tonight. Hopefully, some of you got some cabin fever. You've been cooped up for a couple days with the kiddos or something, trying to get out of the house. It's at 6 o'clock, and a lot of schools and businesses didn't allow people in. I don't think traffic's going to be a total disaster. So if you're looking to get out of the house, get over to the PMAC and, and watch these guys tonight. A 6 o'clock tip-off against Ole Miss. Hopefully a little bit better crowd, and hopefully the Tigers come out and play pretty well. I'm concerned about it. I will pick Ole Miss to win this game. We'll talk a little bit uh, later to David Eckert, who covers Ole Miss in an hour, kind of about what he thinks about this team. Um, but I hope I'm wrong. I was certainly wrong uh, when LSU went to College Station a couple weekends ago. So we'll see. Six o'clock tip off LSU and Ole Miss from the PMAC. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about it moving forward. It's a what if Wednesday. If you got some what ifs, my Twitter at Hunt Palmer 88 or in the Bayou Four chat. We'll get to those coming up next on the Hunt Palmer Show. The Hunt Palmer Show. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. 
Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench, live at lunch on Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire and we bring you a double dose of NFL games. We start on Saturday at 3.30 with Texans-Ravens. Immediately following that, it's Packers-49ers. Then on Sunday at 2 o'clock, it's Buccaneers-Lions. Then Chiefs-Bills. Catch all the action on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. This is the Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Moving right along here, Wednesday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show. Appreciate you hanging out with us. Got to uh, get some point spreads that are already posted on FanDuel for next year's college football season. A few involve LSU, a couple involve uh, some other SEC teams that I think are interesting, so we'll get to a little bit of that here coming up. We'll chat with David Eckert about Ole Miss basketball in an hour at 2.30, getting you ready for LSU and Ole Miss tonight. It is Wednesday. It is a little after 1.30. It means it's time for What If Wednesday. 
Time, space, reality. It's more than a linear path. Where a single choice can branch out into infinite realities. Follow me and ponder the question. What if? All right, first one here. What if you could pick one LSU away baseball series to attend this year? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, okay, I've got the schedule in front of me, actually. Uh, so, the five away weekends are Mississippi State, Arkansas, Tennessee, Missouri, and Alabama. Uh, I will immediately eliminate Alabama and Missouri. Um, Missouri is not good, not a good facility. I don't know what there is to do in Columbia, Missouri. I don't really care. Uh, that's out. And Bama, Tuscaloosa, Bay, well, I, and that's, that's not doing a ton for me. So it's down to three. It's Mississippi State, Arkansas, and Tennessee. I would love to go to any of those. And uh, I've only been to one for a baseball weekend. That is Mississippi State. Mississippi State is by far and away the easiest to get to. If you're Joe LSU fan, you're down here in Louisiana, even if you're in North Louisiana, you can get to Starkville. And I will tell you this. Starkville gets a lot of hate. And in my opinion, deservedly so on a football weekend. It's too small to hold 170,000 people coming in. There's not enough hotel space. There's not enough parking space. Track. Like, it's just it's not enough restaurants. Like, it's just too small. That problem is completely alleviated during baseball season. There are only... 16,000 people in and you do have enough hotel space and the facility I'm told is phenomenal as you've seen on TV. I would love to see that. That sounds fantastic. Arkansas, I, I'm one day I'm going to go to Baum for a weekend for baseball. I want to see that facility and I love Fayetteville. Problem with it is it's really hard to get to. And Knoxville is, you can get to Knoxville a couple flights um, a little bit more easily. And Tennessee's put some money into their baseball facility, and that'll be a high-profile weekend with a lot of big-name prospects and some real, you know, it'll be a rivalry weekend, honestly, after what we saw last year in Omaha and uh, and, and you know, the Super Regional a couple of years ago. So that's that's kind of the pros and cons. I love Knoxville. Uh, Knoxville is a, this is what we were talking about the other day, it's a city. Like, it's like Baton Rouge. It's like Tuscaloosa. It's like Gainesville or Columbia, South Carolina. Like, they are cities that can, that have great restaurants and they have, they have, hotel accommodations, not like Auburn or Athens or Oxford, which are college small towns. So I've talked all the way around this. Um, my answer is probably for me, Tennessee. If it's just for Joe LSU fan that's never done this, but would like to go to one for the first time, go to Mississippi State. You can make the six hour drive, five hour drive from down here. You can find a hotel room in Starkville, get some barbecue at the Little Dewey or whatever the case may be and, and see a gorgeous college baseball facility. That's the easiest one to get to first. So. For me, it's Tennessee. For the purposes of anyone else listening that's looking to go, I'd, I would suggest Mississippi State. Starkville's good for a baseball weekend. All right, next one here. This is from Twitter. What if Gage Jump is healthy all season? What's his role? Okay, so I, this may have been uh, in correlation to something that I posted on, on three a couple of days ago. Uh, I, I had a conversation with someone over at LSU Baseball prior to practice starting on Monday kind of wanted to go over the roster and talk about a few things and this person told me that it's possible that game ju gauge jumps the best pitcher on the team that includes stature Hurd, that includes luke holman that includes cam johnson that includes all these guys that we've been talking about um they're that high on what he could be and that fits from a college pro a high school profile where he was the number one lefty in california that fits from the draft profiles that you've looked at that have him in the top 50 of the draftable players this year. Now, Holman and Hurd are certainly in that mix as well. I think he just slots into the rotation somewhere. And I've always kind of said, I don't really care who pitches Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, they all count for one in SEC play. I care what order they pitch in regionals and supers in Omaha. But as far as just a regular SEC weekend, you know, I, I don't I don't need there to be a, a perfect delineation of who's who. Um, if Gage Jump is healthy all year, from what I've been told from LSU baseball, like he's an SEC weekend starter and a potentially dominant one. And if you go into a postseason weekend where you've got three dudes like LSU thinks they have with Hurd, Holman, and Jump, like you've got a real good chance to win that weekend. And that's the goal of college baseball until you get to Omaha is win weekends. And that's, that's where he slots in. 
All right, you're going to look at this one with me. I'm kind of confused at the ending of it, but this one's from Twitter. What if Brian Kelly retains Corey Raymond and Blake Baker when he drives? <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know. I, 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 that was copy and pasted from Twitter. I think uh, if Brian Kelly retains Corey Raymond and Blake Baker when he arrives, okay, maybe, that may... maybe in a typo on Twitter. Um, look, I, I think if LSU has Corey Raymond as defensive backs coach last two years instead of Kerry Cooks and Robert Steeples, things are probably better than they were. Now, does that mean that they would be at the level they were with Christian Fulton and Grant Delpit and Derrett Stingley and Kerry Benson in 2019 and you would have carried that forward? That I can't tell you, and I highly doubt. I think there was a hit coming no matter what there just based on the organization and where things were at the end of one era and the start of another. Um, and, I, you know, there's reason to believe that Blake Baker is every bit as good or better than Matt House. That's a little over my skis um, because there are more variables in it than, than what was the output of Blake Baker at Missouri and what was the output of Matt House at LSU. Okay, that's who's better. I think there are more variables that go into it than that. Um, but I feel like I feel like LSU is upgraded. How's that? I think that the defensive staff entering this spring is better than the defensive staff was entering last spring. All right, this next one is from Twitter as well. What if LSU baseball didn't make it to a super? Would that be looked at as a bad season? I'm guessing they're referring to maybe Jay Johnson's first season? No, I think they're talking about this year. What if they yeah. didn't make it to a super this okay. year? I think a lot of people that have listened to me over the years understand how I view baseball. Um and it's not going to change anytime soon as long as the format looks like this and the sport looks like this. Jay Johnson's job, in my estimation, is to field a team year over year that over a 56-game schedule puts itself in a great position in the postseason and shows itself to be among the best teams in college baseball. I'm always going to evaluate the 56 games more than two games in a Super Regional or two games that you lose in a regional. Baseball is weird like that, and you can go in there and get beat. I don't think that Tony Vitello choked two years ago when Notre Dame went in there and beat maybe the best college baseball team I've ever seen. That just That's baseball. Notre Dame got a couple big hits. Tennessee lost their cool. A kid got ejected from the game and missed game two, game three. Like, it's... So, if you lose in a regional, which is the, the situation here... That is always going to be disappointing in Baton Rouge to lose in a regional. It's always going to be disappointing. But I'm not going to look at it as a, a bad season. It's just a disappointing end. It's a bad season if you go out there and you go 12-18 and 18 in SEC play and miss the tournament. Like, that's a bad season. If you go 21-9 and nine and lose in a regional because you, you gave up a, a big three-run double in the eighth inning of a game, I, you know, it's baseball. It just happens. So... I realize that's not the way most people want to hear me look at it. Yeah. It's more fun to throw a fit and go, this guy can't win here, and they choked here. No, I. it's just baseball is – there's a reason they play 162 in the majors and 56 in the co in college because you're trying to figure out who's the best over time, and then you crunch it down to two weeks. I'm never going to overreact to that. It just is what it is. All right, last one here from Twitter. What if Brian Kelly doesn't win a national championship? championship until 2027 <laughs> are 10 and 11 win seasons good enough <laughs> so that's, so he wins one but it just takes him five years like that's basically what we're talking I, about here it seems that way um look and it, it's kind of the same to me with football but not quite because i believe the coaches have more of an obligation in terms of game planning calling plays and getting that executed in a football game than in a baseball game where you kind of call pitches, set your defense, and more or less let them go play. There are decisions, pitching changes, and punt decisions, and all kinds of stuff that, yes, I understand that there is more than just, hey, go play, boys. I'm, I'm the coach. We'll see you after the game. Well, you know, that's not how it works. But um, if Brian Kelly is consistently going 10-2 and two or 11-1. and one, They're in the playoffs. Yeah, and that's fine with me. Eventually, if you keep knocking at the door, you will break through. It took Kirby a couple of tries to break through. Um, and in this playoff, there's more chances for you to lose in the playoff than there were in the BCS or, of course, four-team playoff where there's only one game or two. There's, there's three or four in this one. So, um, yeah, if Brian Kelly continuously wins 10 or 11 games, I'm fine with that every year because that proves you're recruiting at a high level, 
you're you're executing at a high level, you're winning a lot of games, and you, you'll eventually break through if you continue to to knock at that door. So I don't need it to look like Kirby's looked the last three years. I don't need it to look like Saban did for 15 years. That'd be great. I'm not going to turn it away, but I don't expect that because that's really, really difficult and basically an unreachable star. If that's the only thing that's acceptable to you, you'll never keep a coach more than four years. So, um, and you'll probably never get there because that just doesn't happen very often in college football. So, yeah, if he can uh, if he can win 10 or 11 until 27, 27 and cash in, that'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> Yeah, if you ask me. That's it for What If Wednesday. Appreciate y'all for uh, for throwing some questions to us via Twitter and the Bayou Ford chat. As I mentioned, and we'll tease it heading into this next segment, I got a couple of LSU lines, USC and Alabama included, some other SEC lines that may be of note. Vandal's already got them out there. We'll talk about them coming up next. You are now listening to The Hunt Palmer Show. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, Retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs, even in the case of an after-hours emergency. The light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks. And you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park miles and miles of trails and parks just for your dogs there are more places to splash to explore to run wild 
and even soar, you imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and bottle siding. But our number one product... Mascona inviting you to join us for Wednesday's Hump Day AFR, presented by Pluckers. Corey Raymond, back on staff at LSU, will have all the reaction on Wednesday's show. Join us, 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. So we're wrapping up hour number one here, and uh, as I mentioned a couple times there in the tease, FanDuel has already got college football lines out for some select games in 2024. Now you've got to be a an aggressive person to be throwing down some of your own lettuce nine months in advance, maybe 11 months in advance in some cases, on games, and you don't even know who's going to be playing or coaching in some of these games. So uh, we keep in mind that like the transfer portal is very much open and will open up again a little bit later. Coaches are still being hired places. Like it is, It's a crapshoot, but FanDuel's throwing lines out there because I guess they want some action, and I think that some of them are fairly entertaining, and a couple of them involve LSU. Uh, LSU and Southern Cal is up for Labor Day weekend. We know that LSU and Southern Cal both just hired new defensive coordinators, Blake Baker at LSU. Uh, DeAnton Lee is the uh, Lynn is the new head coach, uh, new defensive coordinator at USC. LSU in this game out in Vegas, a six and a half point favorite at this point with the Pokes out at FanDuel. I think that's fascinating. Uh, I don't know where that line will be. Um, come the summer, but right now, six and a half makes me feel good about things. <laughs> She's got some work to do on defense, and I feel like Lincoln Riley probably licking his chops, looking at the way LSU played defense last year, but he's got to replace his former Heisman Trophy winning quarterback and uh, do something with a defense that stunk and a team that didn't win very many games last year. So uh, LSU six and a half point favorite against Southern Cal. The LSU Bama line is up for next year on FanDuel. LSU, a one-point favorite on FanDuel against the Crimson Tide. We're going to talk about Alabama and what's going on over there at the top of hour number two. It's a lot. There is a lot of activity uh, in Tuscaloosa. But right now, Kalen DeBoer uh, making speeches at uh, at half court and trying to recruit folks out of the transfer portal. Um, and LSU is a one-point favorite as the Tide will come to Tiger Stadium next year. I've already said this. I said this when Nick Saban retired uh, before they hired Kalen DeBoer. I said, I don't care who comes out of that tunnel next year? Since I was a junior in high school, a junior in college, Nick Saban has been running out of that southeast end zone tunnel and haunting my dreams. So anyone else besides him makes me feel very, very comfortable. And that'll be the case coming up in November when Kalen DeBoer leads the tide out of the tunnel. FanDuel says LSU a one point choice in that game. A couple of, uh, Games with SEC flavor to them. Uh, Georgia is at Ole Miss in uh, in September or October, one of the two. Uh, Georgia, three-and-a-half-point favorite against Ole Miss. Just strap in. I think you already know this as an SEC football fan, but when we get to media days, I don't even know where they are, in, uh, in July, Ole Miss is going to be the hot, trendy pick. Everybody's loving Ole Miss. We'll see. Uh, they'll come to Tiger Stadium too, but when Georgia goes to Oxford, the dogs, three and a half point favorite. Georgia actually at Alabama this coming fall. That's a three point line, Georgia favored in Tuscaloosa uh, by just three. Those are shallow numbers, in my opinion, for Georgia, who's been when they've had to when they've had to get ready and get up and ready to roll, they've been crushing people. Now they didn't against Alabama in the SC championship this year. We know that, and it cost them. But like every time they've had to like get there, get get jacked up to play, they've they've hurt somebody. We'll see. Those are, are low numbers. If you want to get in on Georgia early, now may be the time to do it. And the last one I wanted to look at here is Texas A and M. They'll host Notre Dame. Great home slate for A and M coming up this fall. They will have Texas. They will have Notre Dame. They will have LSU in Kyle Field. And when Notre Dame comes, right now one and a half point favorite are the Aggies. Mike Elko doing a little bit of retention in the transfer portal, trying to get some guys to come in. Sounds like Desmond Ricks is going to head that way. 
And we'll see what Connor Wigman can do at quarterback with Colin Klein as the offensive coordinator. Marcus Freeman now moving forward with another transfer portal quarterback in Riley Leonard. And they'll go down to Kyle Field, and uh, A&M will be a point-and-a-half favorite in that one. So those are some point spreads coming up for this fall. LSU going to be favored right now in every single game, and we'll talk about that based on a column written by The Athletic a little bit earlier today. That's all in hour number two. Hour one, we post it on demand if you want to hear from it. We uh, talked to LSU's new defensive coaches, including Corey Raymond, preview of LSU and Ole Miss, and it also was a What If Wednesday. Catch it all on demand or on YouTube. Come on back after Sports Center, hour number two of the Hunt Palmer Show. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $20,000 off new 23 Ram 1500 Black Widow trucks. $20,000 off new Ram 1500 trucks. And all new Bayou Automotive vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. The importance of doing this Fortified program and offering it to people down here is number one, the only real chance you're going to get to do this is when you put on a new roof or build new. And through companies like HUDCO, who's kind of leading the way in this thing, it's going to offer the customers a huge advantage in the insurance market and the price of their insurance. You know, we're not looking to we're not looking to make a fortune off fortifying. We're trying to give you a better product than our competitor yeah. at the moment. I'm trying to do something that he can. I'm trying to give you something better. So a lot of these insurance shops, you're getting a re-roof. You're only paying your deductible. Let's sit down and talk about the Fortified and let's see what it does to your insurance premium. You're getting a steal. Yeah. You're getting a brand new roof and a Fortified certificate for your deductible, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And I think we're rocking and rolling. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $20,000 off new 23 Ram 1500 Black Widow trucks. $20,000 off new Ram 1500 trucks. And all new Bayou Automotive vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net.
Sports Center. I'm Christine Lisi, TMZ.com, citing Carmel, Indiana police documents report Colts owner Jim Irsay was found unresponsive and struggling to breathe before being transported to a hospital by paramedics last month. According to the report, the incident was classified as a suspected overdose. Patriots today introduced new head coach Gerard Mayo. Meanwhile, his predecessor, Bill Belichick, had his first interview since leaving New England, met with the Falcons on Monday, and Atlanta would be a good fit for Belichick, believes ESPN NFL reporter Jeremy Fowler. A low-key football environment. He doesn't have to deal with, um, you know, the glitz of, say, a Dallas or a tough market like Philly. You know, he could just go and do his work every day, and, um, you know, he would have influence over... The roster construction, I imagine, that I believe that's what he wants. Jeremy Fowler on Greeny. The NBA has postponed tonight's Warriors Jazz game due to a serious medical situation surrounding Golden State assistant Dejan Milojovic. ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski reports the Pacers finalizing a deal to acquire all-star forward Pascal Siakam in a three-team trade that also includes Toronto and New Orleans. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Candy, coming up Thursday. I'll tell you which quarterback not playing this weekend has the most pressure heading into next season. It's on Sportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. I direct your attention to something quite extraordinary. Now, the Hunt Palmer Show. The Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Live, Live from the Mercedes-Benz Mercedes Benz of Baton, Baton Rouge Studios. Studios. This is Hunt Palmer. Hour two, Wednesday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show. Appreciate you hanging out with us as things warm up just a touch here in South Louisiana. And chilly. You know, I was thinking, I was talking to my wife about this the other day. Or the other day, yesterday. Um... What we've had here for the last 48 hours is just winter for like 70% of the people in this country. Like, yeah, it's just freezing cold and, you know, sometimes there's some ice on the roads and that's just how you live for four months out of the year. I'll personally pass on all that. To everyone that yells and screams at me when I don't complain in July and August when it's 1,000 degrees, this is what I complain about. I don't like it when it's this cold and it's like this for so many people for so many months of the year. Like y'all know how much I love the Cubs and like in Chicago, I'm watching games at Wrigley in April and it's like 32 in April. I'm in flip flops at the box. I'm eating crawfish, playing golf. Ugh. I'm glad we don't have to deal with it very often. It's like the high is like 64 tomorrow. So we'll, we'll, we'll survive quite nicely. Um, but hopefully those of you who have been staying safe, you got electricity, you got uh, got water, and uh, we're we're moving forward here this week here in South Louisiana. Uh, who else is moving forward? That'd be Alabama's football program without the greatest college football coach of all time. And when he announced this, that he was leaving, my assertion was they're just going to be like us now. They're just going to be good. If you go back and listen to what I said, it was like, they'll be like Clemson. They'll be like Oklahoma. They'll be like LSU. They'll be like USC. They'll just be good. I don't think anybody is forecasting that Alabama is two years away from the Independence Bowl. Incidentally, that's where they were when Nick Saban took over. Like, that's not the case. I don't expect the bottom to fall out of Alabama football. I think they hired a good coach. I think he'll have a plan. And I think Alabama will be good. But Alabama, for 17 years, has been operating at a different level than everyone else. It doesn't mean they win every game. It does mean for over a decade they didn't lose, ten, didn't lose two games in a single regular season, which is just almost impossible. But from a recruiting perspective, from a hiring coach's perspective, a player retention perspective, and a championship's perspective, they were in a league of their own. And that had a little bit to do with being the University of Alabama and a lot to do with having the greatest coach of all time. Again, Alabama has been good and won championships outside of Nick Saban. But the success that Alabama has had for 17 years is almost all 
due to Nick Saban. And my assertion has been from watching whatever you watch with Feinbaum or looking at people on Twitter or just the general attitude of the Alabama fan is it's kind of Alabama's birthright to just be awesome all the time and we're going to be awesome all the time. And you can say that as long as Saban keeps playing out the string. And guess what? If Nick Saban would have come back and coached next year, I would absolutely pick Alabama to be in the playoff and be a threat to win a national championship. Still don't love Jalen Milrow, but that's how I would feel. And now I think things are starting to sink in a little bit for the folks in Crimson and White. This is a tweet from Dan Wetzel. Let me make sure I know where Dan is these days. Yahoo. Um, Those guys bounce back and forth all the time. Got to make sure you're giving proper attribution. Dan Wetzel is at Yahoo. And he put this tweet together. Since Nick Saban retired, 21 players have entered the transfer portal from Alabama. And it's not just the bottom of the barrel. We're talking about Isaiah Bond, who would likely be their number one receiver next year. We're talking about Caleb Downs, their best young defender. Five-star, top ten player in the country. Starter as a freshman. All-conference type player. Fast track to be a high, high first-round pick two years from now in Tuscaloosa. He's in the transfer portal. He's going to go to Georgia when he announces. This has not happened at Alabama. Yes, they go get Jamison Williams from Ohio State and use the transfer portal to get an elite player. Yes, they go get Jameer Gibbs from Georgia Tech. They go get Eli Ricks from LSU. Their left tackle comes from Vanderbilt and is an all-conference player. That's how they have used the transfer portal to fill in with elite players all over the field. I can't think of really anybody who was a big-time impact player at Alabama that left. The only guy that came to mind who I don't even think was a big impact player at Alabama but became one at his new place, Drew Sanders, outside linebacker, went to Arkansas and was basically their best defensive player. But yeah. Alvin Kamara somewhat went into Tennessee. True. And that was that in the transfer? That was just a I'll, guy that yeah, transferred. Yeah, I think he just yeah. transferred. Yeah. I mean, that, and look, that's, he was in the backfield with Yeldon and Henry and all those guys. It was just a – you can see that picture. It's like Yeldon – Henry, Kamara, maybe Josh Jacobs. Yeah, I think so. It's just ridiculous. And so, yeah, but fair, fair enough. Um, But, I mean, it's no one leaves. And really, their two best players, Isaiah Bond and, and Caleb Downs, out. Six recruits from the class of 2024 25, so this coming class, have decommitted. And again, I don't believe this signals the downfall of Alabama football. It would be fun to tap dance on the grave, and go, but that's not the, the case. They just have to play by our rules now. That's all I'm asking. Saban dictates the rules. He's got so many skins on the wall, he can just walk in there, and the presence and the jewelry and the brand that he created sells it. And so he comes up with the number one recruiting class every every year, and no one ever leaves, and the best players come to him. And there's good reason to do that. I was cranky for almost two decades when he kept coming into the state of Louisiana and plucking guys out of there and sending them to Tuscaloosa. How often did LSU go into the state of Alabama and get somebody that Alabama desperately wanted? About never. It was a one-way street. And I hated it. It drove me nuts. But I couldn't fault the kids. Look what you're going to play for. You're almost guaranteed to play in two national championship games and win one the second you walk in the door. Those days are over. Over. Kalen DeBoer very well may win a national championship. He will not win six. He won't win four. They're on the same plane as everybody else now because Saban is the presence and the draw. Think of the difference in the conversation on your official visit if you're talking to Nick Saban or Kalen DeBoer. I am quite confident not one player 
Alabama is heavily recruiting from the Southeast, who is a junior in high school, had ever heard of Kalen DeBoer six weeks ago. Maybe not one. Keep in mind, like Sam Montgomery didn't know who Nick Saban was. I mean, sorry, did not know who Steve Spurrier was when he was a junior in high school. But everybody knows who Nick Saban is. And he walks in the door into your living room or you come on that official visit into that office that's got the button on the desk, the door closes behind you, he's got the little Debbies in there, 567 national championships and Heisman trophies all over the place. That's a presence. There's a message there that's already baked in. Kalen DeBoer has none of that. He's got the same shirt Nick had that has the A on it. And you're seeing that play out right in front of your face. Isaiah Bond, out. Caleb Downs, out. This was not the case when Les Miles took over for Nick Saban. You couldn't just leave. You had to sit out a year. Now, see ya. And it's just furthering the evidence that, hey, welcome to the real world, Alabama. You've been floating in the clouds for 17 years. And I'm certain... There's this, I saw a tweet that was responding to Andy Staples earlier today from an Alabama said that if I have to pay this penance for 17 years of dominance, I'm just going to have to do it. And that's a wonderful outlook. I don't feel like a lot of Alabama fans are willing to make that concession just yet. But guess what? There's a real good chance they lose two or three games next year. You got Georgia coming in. You got to go to Baton Rouge. You got to go to Oxford. Either Texas or Oklahoma's on that schedule. I don't know which one, but they everybody plays. They play everybody, so one of those two is on there. You got to play Tennessee. You got to play Auburn and Hugh Freeze's second. Like, and you're hemorrhaging some of that young talent. Just telling you, it, it's gonna come pretty quick if it's not already there. And I think that's gonna be a real difficult realization for Alabama fans. I'm curious to see how it goes because. Things can turn toxic in college athletics. And I think that Alabama's booster club and the NIL situation and the fan base will try to rally around Kalen DeBoer and realize Nick's not coming back. But how quickly might they come disenchanted? Because 10-2 and two is unfathomable over there. Unfathomable. Think about the run. Undefeated in 08 into the SEC championship game before they lost. Undefeated in nine. In 10, they lost two games. One loss in 11. No losses in 12. One loss in 13. You can go through the years they're winning championships. One or zero losses every year. You throw back-to-back 10 and twos up there, losing the playoff to Ohio State, good luck. You think everybody's going to be excited to see you at the booster functions? You think the call-ins on the Kalen DeBoer show are going to be super positive? You think the Twitterverse is going to feel real good about that? Mm-mm. And again, that doesn't separate them from any of us. Like We all play by these rules. They just haven't for 17 years. Welcome to the show, Kalen DeBoer. Which, by the way, we don't have the sound, and I don't care. Because it's not that big a deal, and I don't want to make that big a deal about it. I'm just going to put it right here at the back end of this segment. But everybody, everybody made a huge deal about Brian Kelly saying family at the basketball game. Everybody, right? Old Yankee Brian Kelly coming in trying to assimilate with uh, with LSU fans, trying to sp- speak in a Southern accent. Everybody made a huge deal about it. Kay- and I, my contention, and Matt feels the same way because we talk on a microphone for a lot of hours a week. Slur words all the time. It happens to me all the time. And I think you can slur family if it if if you have some other thought that's going through your mind. That's easy to do. Kalen DeBoer slurred standard last night. He said Alabama is the standard. Alabama is the standard, and he he slurred it. I didn't see anybody going nuts saying that Kalen DeBoer was trying to fake a a Southern accent. Whatever. (laughs) It's uh, it's a new world for the Crimson Tide, and they're they're learning about it pretty quickly. All right, uh, article in the Athletic yesterday. Speaking of college football, SEC football record predictions for all the teams. I think you'll want to hear what they have to say about LSU. That's next. 
The Hunt Palmer Show. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. It was a human day. Barefoot children play. Looking for the summer shade. Time to slip away. Like cyber stumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench, live at lunch on Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. RAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. BRAC, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Tanagriff joined me and Jimmy out for the Thursday edition of Live at Lunch. We're at Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar and Town Square Pizza. Dwayne Colucci is with us along with Matt Humans. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. weekdays on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Listen to all four NFL playoff games from the divisional round starting Saturday afternoon at 3.30 when the Baltimore Ravens are going to host the Texans and continuing Sunday afternoon at 2 when the Lions host the Tampa Bay Buc Buccaneers. Go to 1045ESPN.com for a full schedule. Your home for the 2024 NFL playoffs and Super Bowl 58 is 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge.
This is the Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. We'll get one more look at the Ole Miss Rebels who will be in the PMAC tonight against LSU. David Eckert covers them for the Jackson Clarion Ledger. He's with us in 10 minutes. Um, but we want to stick with football here. The Athletic uh, wrote a football season prediction for 2024. It's not too early to do that, huh? January 17th. Um, Seth Emerson predicted the win-loss record for every single Southeastern Conference team over at The Athletic. That includes now, moving forward, of course, Oklahoma and Texas. So I'll give you uh, Georgia first, as he picked Georgia actually to lose a game, 11-1, and 7-1 in the SEC. Picked them to lose at Texas. So you think, well, 11-1, 7-1, that's probably the best record. No, not the best record. He's got an undefeated in his projections. And it is your fighting Tigers of LSU. Seth says, LSU unbeaten yet seems like a stretch, but there's no Georgia or Texas on the schedule. The toughest games, Alabama, Ole Miss, and Oklahoma are at home. Okay. I can get down with that. And it's a reason for optimism moving forward. I got huge concerns on defense. Going to have to see how the wide receiver position shakes out. But that's all a question we can ask. The fact is we have the schedule. And traditionally speaking, based on what we saw last year, the toughest games on LSU's schedule, likely Alabama, Ole Miss, and Oklahoma. I could make an argument for A&M. It probably falls a little bit flat. Anybody think Florida's got it cooking when you go to the swamp this year? Eh. USC is trying to save itself from a five-loss season with no defense. UCLA almost fired their coach. They're coming in. So that's probably the best thing about LSU moving into 2024 is that the schedule doesn't look massively daunting when you look at a conference that's got Georgia and Texas and Alabama and Ole Miss in Tennessee and Auburn. Like it's the toughest schedule. It's the toughest conference in the country. And you're missing the top dog in Georgia. And the next couple on the list are coming to you. And that goes back to my assertion of how I'm viewing college football, which changes now moving forward. From the time I started watching college football in about 1993. Through 2013, you had to be basically undefeated, maybe one loss, if you wanted to win a national championship. In the first few years of my life, you you could have a couple national champions, depending on who won the Sugar Bowl and who won the Rose Bowl. But they fixed that, and they went to the BCS, and if you were going to get into that, you were going to have to have one or zero losses, asterisk 2007 LSU. And the same thing held true Moving into the playoff era, you had to have one loss or zero losses. So you start to look at a football schedule and like, you better go 11-1 and one at the very least or else your goal is off the board. That's not the case anymore. I think 10-2 and two is the new goal. Yes, 11-1 and one is better. Yes, 12-0 and 0 is great. You'll get a bye if you're 12-0 and 0 in the Southeastern Conference. So you have that to reach for, but if you fall short of it and, hey, you just go 10-2, and two, well, I think you're a playoff team. We'll see how it shakes out. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe we'll find ourselves in a scenario where 10-2 and two SEC team is left out in the cold. I think it's possible. I think it's unlikely. So now as I frame my college football viewing from an LSU fan perspective in 2024, it's like, okay, well, I can lose two games. You lose to Bama, lose to USC in Vegas, but you beat an Ole Miss at home. You go on the road and be an eight and M in Florida, A uh, and M Florida. Who else is on the schedule? Got Oklahoma coming in. You beat them. Handle your business against Vanderbilt, Arkansas. That seems really doable to get in. And personally, for me, I enjoy that more. I think there are plenty of LSU fans that are wired to say, no, you got to 
play to a championship standard week in and week out, and if you don't get that done and you can't beat Alabama, you don't deserve your shot. And I'll go, well, it's not really structured like that anymore. I can lose to Alabama now and have a shot. And we just had a whole segment making fun of Alabama saying they're going to come down a peg. So we'll see what comes of that program and how we frame the schedule three years from now. But right now, feels like with Florida reeling, I mean, they, the Athletics picking Florida to go two and six next year. They're picking Arkansas and Mississippi State. Well, we don't play Mississippi State. Arkansas one and seven. Vanderbilt 0 oh and eight. South Carolina's on the schedule. Picking them to go two and seven. Picks Oklahoma to go three and five. All these teams toward the bottom, he's got LSU. I mean, LSU plays. AM three and five. Oklahoma three and five. South Carolina two and six. Florida two and six. Arkansas one and seven. Vanderbilt 0 oh and eight. The top of the league, he's got Georgia seven and one. You don't play him. Missouri seven and one. You don't play him. Texas seven and one. You don't play him. Got Bama at six and two. They come to you. Ole Miss six and two. They come to you. Got Tennessee at five and three. You don't play them. Those are the only teams he's got with a winning record in the league. Now, once again, I'm not taking a January 17th one guy's opinion of what the SEC shakes out to look like when we don't know who's even going to play for some of these teams as gospel. That's not the point. The point is that I'm trying to see this through our eyes in August. What frames the conversation then? And I think there's reason to believe that when you look at LSU in August, you will say, okay, that offense looks damn good. They've revamped the defensive staff. Maybe there's a transfer portal ad here or there over the next week or in the spring that fills a need on defense. And you say, okay, based on that returning unit on offense, the changes they're trying to make on defense, and what that schedule looks like today, I think LSU could be a playoff team. What did Brian Kelly say last August? I disagreed with him right here on this show. Proved he was right, but I disagreed with him. So when can you expect to be at a championship level? He said, we need one more recruiting cycle. And I was looking at it going, well, you got Makai Wingo, Mason Smith, Savion Jones, Ovia Gofu, Braden Swenson, Harold Perkins, Greg Penn, Omar Spates, bringing in all-conference corner and Deuce Chestnut. Got Sage Ryan. Like this, this looks like a team that is already ready to compete, and they certainly were not. And maybe he knew that. Maybe he was headed that direction, and it got really confirmed. But either way, I have concerns about that side of the ball, but the, the, the game changes. LSU, to be a championship team this past year, had to go 11-1. and one. That's a tall ask. 10-2, and two, they, they did. You can get there. So, I'm excited about the fact that somebody thinks LSU can go 8-0. and I haven't dived fully into what the schedule looks like. Um, but it looks favorable when you look at through Seth Emerson's eyes. So, that'll be exciting. I think there will be some expectation going on here in, uh, in August. I think people may have forgotten about how bad the defense was because you're just like, oh, well, they got Blake Baker, got Corey Raymond, got Bo Davis. They're good. They'll be fine. Coach them up. And then they'll turn the lights on in Vegas, and I guess we'll see. But hey, Seth Emerson thinks we're going undefeated, so we'll take that. That'll get you a bye. And then a, well, wouldn't get a home playoff game because you get a bye. We'll have to work all that out, but you, you'd have an advantageous spot in the playoffs if you were to go 12-0 uh, and 8-0 and in league play. That's, uh, that's over at The Athletic if you want to check it out. Seth Emerson wrote it, projected SEC standings. Um, LSU. Reign supreme at 8-0. Got three seven and ones. Missouri, he thinks, hanging on to that, which is interesting to me. All right, uh, we'll take a time out. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk some LSU Ole Miss basketball. David Eckert covers the Rebels for the Jackson Clarion Ledger. He'll join us next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. I told you about my horror story yesterday. I had the power go out about 1030 because of the ice storm in my house, and that means I can't use my CPAP because it runs on electricity. I couldn't sleep in the bed. Maybe that's your problem. Maybe you just don't want the power to go out. Either way, Boudreaux's Electric can help you out because this can happen at any month of the year, whether it's an ice storm in the winter, hurricane, 
late summer or even one of these summer thunderstorms that we have that knocks the power out. It's just a massive inconvenience, and you can give yourself the peace of mind of that never happening with a Generac generator from Boudreaux's Electric. Neil Melissa Boudreaux, been operating Boudreaux's Electric for 40 years. Every generator they sell comes with a free 10-year warranty, a free 10-year warranty. And for just $5.20 a day over the life of that 10-year warranty, you can give yourself the peace of mind to make sure that the power does not go out in your home. It's an easy call to make. Boudreaux's Electric, 225-300-9389, 225-300-9389. Have one of their technicians come out and install that Generac generator sometime today. Boudreaux's Electric, 225-300-9389. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the jimsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the jimsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. This weekend, we bring you a double dose of NFL games. We start on Saturday at 3.30 with Texans-Ravens. Immediately following that, it's Packers 49ers. Then on Sunday at 2 o'clock, it's Buccaneers-Lions. Then Chiefs-Bills. Catch all the action on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. This is the Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. I'll be headed out to the PMAC tonight, 6 o'clock tip-off. Hope you will be joining me. If not, you can listen on our sister station, Eagle 98.1. We'll be 
John Brady and Chris Blair on the call. Pre-game will start up at 5.30 tip just after 6 o'clock inside the Assembly Center. LSU and the 15-1 and Ole Miss Rebels. David Eckert covers Ole Miss for the Jackson Clarion Ledger. And he joins us now on the Gems Firearms Hotline. Thanks for the time. How are you, man? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It is our, our pleasure. Um, long run there at uh, for Kermit at, at Ole Miss. They decided to go in a different direction. Chris Beard is the hire. How much has he changed with Ole Miss basketball in just half a year on the job? Yeah, um, just about everything. Yep. <laughs> you know? Um, but it's interesting. Um, this is not your typical Chris Beard team. Um, you know, you think of those Texas Tech teams, um, you know, just, just really winning with defense, and that's not what this team has been at all. Um, you know, they, they make a ton of threes. They're the best three-point shooting team in the SEC. Um, they, they really don't defend particularly well. They're not terrible, but they're not great. Um, so, so it's been an interesting team build, but obviously it's, uh, it's working so far. What does Chris Beard say about the fact that they struggle to defend? I would imagine that uh, is not something he's very used to. Yeah, you know, it's um, you know, I think his his kind of catchphrase is discipline, right? He he always says he knows that his guys can can defend, that he has capable defenders, but it, it's it's lapses in in concentration, lapses in, in effort in particular moments that you know kind of create that that hardship but yeah that's certainly something that i'm sure he would like to see improve and in fairness pretty good defensive game against against vanderbilt on uh, on saturday held the commodores to 56 points in that uh, that win for ole miss offensively as you mentioned they've played uh, played very well and that's been led it looks like by matthew morell the senior guard what type of player is he yeah i mean he's just a shooter um uh, right he's he's gonna pull up from anywhere um, he's got one of the purest releases that you'll see. It just looks good every time it comes, the ball comes out of his hand. And, you know, he's athletic enough to make plays at the rim. Um, he's always been a guy that's that scored proficiently for Ole Miss, but he's been, he's been e- efficient uh, this year. Um, really just, I think, the product of, of the offensive system being a little bit more functional. It was kind of a mess last season. Um, but, yeah, definitely the, the lead guy for them on offense, for sure. Alex Flanagan comes over from Auburn. SEC fans familiar with him, but uh, he's he's been good statistically speaking, specifically uh, assisting the basketball. Not usual for a six six guy to kind of be the distributor, but is that kind of the role he's playing? Yeah, he just does everything. He's like stereotypical veteran Swiss Army knife. Uh, you know, he's tough. Uh, he's he's really smart. Um, I think he had a nine assist game against Florida. Just kind of. Um, a lot of those going into the post. Um, so yeah, like you said, talented passer really has surprised me with his scoring. Um, did, did, you know, obviously scored some points at Auburn, but kind of not at the level that we're seeing this year. He, he just takes, you know, he's one of those guys that he'll just take a bad shot and you're like, what, what, what is he shooting that for? That's, you know, not a good look and it goes in. So, um, you know, that's, He's, he's got a little like Carmelo Anthony to him um, in, in that sense. But, yeah, he's uh, he's been a great ad. When I found out that Chris Beard had added the nation's shot block leader, I went, oh, that's going to be a problem for a lot of people in the SEC. Jamarian Sharp was that at Western Kentucky. He's seven foot five. What else can you tell him about? Tell us about him. <laughs> you know, the, the media court here loves Jamarian Sharp because he's, he's really thoughtful. He's just a fun dude. Uh, and, yeah, you know, he's uh, – Obviously, proficient shot blocker. I, I think kind of struggles when you pull him out of the paint. So, so teams with stretch five um, guys who are comfortable on the perimeter, um, you know, maybe not the best matchup for him. Uh, but yeah, you know, he, he is what he is. He's he's gonna. He had a he broke the the Ole Miss single game record for for blocks in a game recently. Um, you know, he's he's. He's making making use of that frame for sure. A couple guys that LSU fans will be familiar with because of their contact with LSU during the Will Wade era. Brandon Murray played here, and then Musa Cisse was a guy that LSU very much wanted and ended up not coming to Baton Rouge. What can you tell us about their impact on this team? I think we're still waiting to see it from Brandon Murray. He's one of those guys who, um, 
you know, just has really just been um, made eligible by the that NCAA ruling because he's a two-time transfer. Um, so he, he, his minutes are gradually growing. Um, he's been scoring efficiently. He's not getting a ton of shots. He's not getting a ton of opportunities. But for now, he's a really nice bench piece. Um, and really, uh, the, the same for Cisse. Uh, you know, he's um, coming off the bench most of the time. He did get one start. Um, but, you know, he's, he's similar to Jamarian Sharp um, with, with the shot blocking ability. He's probably a little bit tougher to move off the block, probably more of an offensive threat. So he, he and Sharp will just about split minutes. Um, but, yeah, uh, two good assets, both coming off the bench right now for them. I see a team that's 15-1, and one, ranked 21st in the country, and that tells me one story. And I see a team that went up to Knoxville and got smoked, and that tells me a different story. Where do you think Ole Miss is, and do you think they're going to be a tournament team this year? Yeah, I, I think the, the, the place I am with them right now is one of, like, healthy skepticism. Um, do I think they're the 21st best team in the country? No, I do not. Um, do I think they're the 70th best team in the country, like Ken Palm would have you believe? I don't, I don't think so either. I think they're in the middle. Um, you know, I think a, a good outcome for this team is, you know, top nine NCAA tournament seed. If they're comfortable on selection Sunday, I think from this point on, you'd take that if you're an Ole Miss fan. Um, but look, I mean, you know, I do think they're getting better, which you'd expect for a team um, with this many new pieces, with a first-year head coach. Uh, they just blew the doors off of Florida, uh, which really I was not expecting. Probably their best performance of the year. Um, so they are improving. Um, but, you know, uh, winning on the road in, in SEC play is difficult. So this is, uh, this is a big test for them tonight. Sure is LSU and Ole Miss tonight at 6 o'clock. Can't let you go without uh, a thought on football lanes rolling in the, uh, in the transfer <laughs> portal. What's the buzz like in Oxford right now? Yeah, it's um, it's it's actually been tampered down a little bit. They just got some bad news from, from Tyler Barron last night. Yeah, he slipped, to, he slipped to Louisville, but everybody's excited. You know, they're they've been very open about hey, we are pushing all the chips in to to make the college football playoff in 2024. So I think that's the expectation here, and I, I think they've got the talent to do that. So whether it comes together, we, we still have to see, but. Everybody's real excited for sure. If you look at the last three years, you can very clearly make the case that Ole Miss is right behind Georgia and Alabama as the third most successful program in the Southeastern Conference. So it's not like they've just been an absolute doormat. They've been very good under Lane Kiffin. But you can't argue with the fact that they've never made it to the Southeastern Conference championship game nor played in a game that would have national championship implications in December or January. Does the 12-team playoff change that mindset for a program like Ole Miss that has never been there but it's like, oh, now it's not four, it's 12. Like, we got a shot now. Definitely. And and yeah. I think, you know, a system that allows you to acquire talent um, without depending on legacy, um, like the one that we have right now with an IL or transfer portal, I think has benefited them, right? Um, there are other reasons. Obviously, Ole Miss has its NIL really together. They are among the best organized um you know, collectives in, in, in college athletics. So, you know, they, they found a way to compete at a level that maybe, you know, their, their history and, and their status in the SEC um, might have preclude, precluded them from before. So all of this change has, has been a, a big net positive for, that, for them. And I think the college football playoff expansion is, is, another, is another component to that. He's David Eckert, covers Ole Miss for the Jackson, Clary, and Ledger, and we appreciate some time, man. Yep, thank you. LSU and Ole Miss tonight, 6 o'clock over in the Assembly Center. Uh, Tigers going to have to score some points in this one. Ole Miss has been pretty good on, on offense, and they haven't turned it over a lot, which LSU's gotten a lot of opportunities from. You're going to need a big effort, I think, from Jalen Cook and Jordan Wright to, to score some points and try to outscore an Ole Miss team that's uh, got some shot-blocking ability and some offensive firepower. So I'm excited to get in there tonight at uh, at 6 o'clock, so we'll see what things look like in the PMAC. We'll come back and close things out on the Hunt Palmer Show. The Hunt Palmer Show. 
In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know so go the extra mile it's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there mercedes-benz vans Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Show you the power of hosted phone service and Metro E, direct connections between your locations. For a limited time, get three months free. Some restrictions may apply. Visit us at letsrev.biz. Rev Business. Custom Colors Body and Paint welcome Will Rapp and Ian McKnight to the team. The next generation will continue the family tradition of friendly service that Billy and Pete started in 1987. Custom Colors of Baton Rouge, 11550 Cloverland off Segan in the Industrial Place. Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Bear. Mornings from 7 to 10 on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Scona inviting you to join us for Wednesday's Hump Day AFR, presented by Pluckers. Corey Raymond, back on staff at LSU, will have all the reaction on Wednesday's show. Join us, 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. This is the Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. I'll, uh, I'll be in the PMAC tonight, as I've said, and I'm going to be cheering, and I'm going to be fired up, and I'm going to be ready to go, and I'll uh, I'll cheer the guys on. I'm, uh, I'm fired up to go watch the game. 
Uh, I am not in a point right now where I'm going to pick LSU to win the game. Uh, I will pick it um, Ole Miss 78, LSU 70. That's, o- that's over, kind of o- over under butts and seats 5,000? I'll go, I'll go over 5,000. I think that's a good over under. In a, what are they, it seats 12. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, just under half full. Wednesday I'll, night. I'll go over. It's cold. I I know. I, I I don't know. It's school night. I don't know. Um, I don't feel great about it. They've had some pretty weak crowds, but that's look. I, I I'm not chastising LSU fans for it. I have asked fans to go, and we'll continue to do that. Um, I don't feel bad about that either. But um, yeah, I, I think it'll be a little under half full. I think five thousand will get over under. I will optimistically take the over, and we'll see. Let's play take it or leave it. All right. <laughs> All right. First one here. When asked about retaining Dennis Allen, Saints GM Mickey mm. Loomis came prepared as well. He had a sheet of paper with the records of the first few seasons for legendary NFL head coaches like Tom Landry, Chuck Noll, Bill Belichick, and Bill Walsh. This is a fair comparison. Take it or leave it. It really feels like you're trying to make a sales pitch. And I just don't think anybody's buying it. I don't think anybody's under the impression that Dennis Allen is in the same category as Chuck Knoll, Bill Belichick, Bill Walsh, and Tom Landry. Uh, it's a different time, and I, I get why he's doing it, and I really, truly believe, I think the Saints brass believes they're this close. I look at the Saints situation and I say your roster's old, your salary cap situation stinks, your head coach is a proven loser at this point, and things are not moving in the right direction. The Saints brass would very clearly, based on every decision they make, would look at me and say, no, no, we're very close. You see where Tampa is? That's all it takes. You just got to be a winning team, then play well when you get to the playoffs, and, and that's that's all you've got to do. And I would suggest that, no, you need to look like an elite-level football team if you want to compete for championships. And at no point for a two- or three-week stretch do the Saints look like an elite football team. No point. And it's not getting any better. The players are, in fact, getting older. So I think this is uh, framing it in an, it's just a disingenuous way, if I, if that's, that's, all I, that's all I can say about it. Tony Romo will be on the call for Chiefs' bills. Yeah. Romo will be beside himself the whole game. Take it or leave it. <laughs> I'll take it. I mean, take th- it. there's going to be good quarterback play in this game, and he freaks out when there's good quarterback play. And if there's a, a high intensity moment or a big play, like he free, like yeah, these guys, generally speaking, provide a lot of fireworks, and he freaks out when you see fireworks. So I know there are a lot of people that loved Romo out of the start because he was so familiar with the game and had that great energy, and now people are just grossly annoyed with Romo. Yeah, it's like people are getting tired of the shtick. And I'm just, I'm not, I hate that announcer guy. I'm not this announcer hates my team guy. I just, I'm very rarely turned off by an announcer, whether my team's playing or not. Like, I don't love Eduardo Perez on the College World Series because I feel like he's never watched a college baseball game until he arrives in Nebraska. Like, that's how I feel when he shows up. So I don't, but that's like the only example I can think of of, an announcer that I just kind of don't jive with. Everything else is, generally speaking, just fine. And so um, I, I like Romo. I'm not sick of him. I think he's just fine. Yeah, I mean, I think some people may say, oh, he's over dramatic, or, you know, he gets too overly excited. But, like, I think that's just him. I think he just yeah. loves football. And I think he, li- and like you said, quarterback play, he just, just gets some yeah. razz. So, all right, next one here T- Tennessee's Dalton Connect is the best player in the SEC. Take it or leave it. Um, I'll take it. I mean, he's the best it. scorer in the SEC. If you're watching Tennessee last night play Florida, I mean, he just put it on them. Uh, was about to go for 40 in that game. Would have been the first uh, Tennessee player to go for 40 at home um, in like 20 years. He's he he raises up and shoots threes over people because he's like six six and he can get to the rim. He makes a lot of free throws. Like he's that was a hit, and they've added him to a team with a bunch of veterans with Zakai Ziegler and Josiah Jordan James and Santiago Vescovi and all these guys and he's the best player they got and so they're they're a real force they look like they could be an elite eight final four team although he's had teams that have looked like that and inevitably they get bounced in the NCAA tournament but he's he's a handful there's no doubt about it he's fun to watch all right last one here Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen are creating another Brady Manning rivalry in the AFC take it or leave it 
Um, I think it's okay to take that. Yeah, I, I guess. Is, are they going to have that I'll many chapters? It. I mean, how many Brady, Brady Manning playoff games do we have? Roethlisberger had his say in there for a little yeah. bit. There were probably like seven or eight of them. And were, we've there, had Mahomes, were there more? Yeah, maybe. And we've already had Mahomes Allen like what three at least three. Yeah, times. I mean, and there have been a couple of classics yeah. that have been involved. Now Burrow interjected himself there, and hopefully he'll kind of play the Roethlisberger role and be in the mix for that as well. Uh, and certainly Lamar is looking awesome. So it's just there's just a lot of good quarterbacks uh, in the um, in in the AFC, but. Look, I think Mahomes is a phenomenal player that's headed to the Hall of Fame with two Super Bowls. I think Josh Allen is an uber talent that would have every opportunity to win a Super Bowl over the next few years if the Bills can put some really good players around him. And I, I think the Bills have a real chance to win this weekend. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think that's totally blasphemous. They they look like, to me, Hall of Fame-type players that could win championships. So I'll take it. Um, all right, that's it for Take It or Leave It. We're about to shut down shop here. Um, hopefully we'll see some of y'all out at the PMAC tonight if you miss any of the show. Catch it on demand, as always. You know where you can find it, including on YouTube. Hunt on LSU for my thoughts on Corey Raymond coming back to Baton Rouge. Matt's going to drive you home on After Further Review. We're back same time, same place tomorrow on Palmer Show. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench, live at lunch on Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have